Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster On Demand event, where today we're going to be introducing university courses in paramedic science. With these events, we try and cover four main themes, and it's all about supporting you to make brilliant university decisions in the future. We look at why you might want to consider the course, what to expect on it, application tips and an an overview of potential careers as well. And I'm delighted to be joined by two people that know more about the course than, than most, most, most people um, would do because they're actually studying it. And that's Stu and Chelsea joining us from the University of Gloucestershire. They're currently paramedic science students and they're just gonna tell you more about their experience and why it might be a good idea for you to perhaps consider it as well. And with that, Chelsea, Stu, I'll pass to you, please. Thanks, John. Um, so yeah, I'm Stu. And I'm Chelsea and we are second year student paramedics at the University of Gloucestershire. So from September 2021 this year, the only way to become a paramedic is to do a BSc in paramedic science, sometimes called paramedic practice or paramedic practitioner. Now you can do this by working for an ambulance service and doing the degree on the job in partnership with the university over a number of years while you're working. It's very competitive uh, and with some ambulance services, you need to have worked with them for a number of years. Um, as an emergency care assistant or the equivalent first, but not always. The other way, which we're going to discuss today, uh, is by completing a degree at university that's been approved by the Health and Care Professions Council. The, that's the HCPC. Yeah, thanks, Stu. Um, so today we've got a presentation for you on the role of a paramedic and a little bit about what university life is like. Um, so we're going to be discussing what a paramedic is, where they work and the opportunities that are available for you. We're also going to discuss how you become a paramedic via the university route and then a little bit about the course structure and a little bit about what we learn, kind of the theory and practical side of it. We'll then have a little discussion on placement and then move into personal statements to help you apply. So what is a paramedic and where do they work? I think most of us have got in our mind the traditional big yellow ambulance, um, but there are lots of other areas as well, and I think some of them may surprise some people. So uh, Chelsea will go through those with us. Yeah, so quite often, like Stu said, um, a paramedic is thought to work in a big yellow ambulance, driving around on blue lights. However, paramedic roles are so diverse. Um, just within the NHS alone, you can work as um, a DCA, which is a double crewed ambulance. So you work as a two-man crew, so you're a paramedic and you work with an emergency care assistant, or you can also work as a solo responder. Um, you can then work up to become operational management, so you can become an operations officer and be involved in the leadership side of it. Or you can also do the clinical management side, so you can become a lead paramedic. Um, there's also research roles, so you can move into research and then become a lecturer or you can work in the emergencies operation centers, which again includes management and leadership roles. There's lots of other places still to come as well. You can work on an air ambulance, the helicopter emergency medical services, um, hazardous area response teams or the heart. Um, they deal with um, dangerous areas working at height, closed environments, underwater, terrorism, um, telephone triage systems like 111, the paramedics work there. Um, NHS acute trusts. Some paramedics actually work in the emergency department in A&E um, or in primary and secondary care, like urgent care centres, mental health, community settings, GP surgeries. And then there's national roles in NHS England and Health Education England. And then branching out even further, you've got the military, private and independent sector, repatriation flights, oil rigs, cruise ships, so there are hundreds of roles that you can go and undertake. The College of Paramedics um, put a really good interactive career framework on their website, and I'd encourage everyone to have a look at this. Um, it's a really good document that's really interactive and lets you understand all of these different types of work uh, and all of some of the other streams that Chelsea mentioned in, in research and education as well. So I'd really encourage people to have a look at the College of Paramedics website for that as part of your decision to be a paramedic and uh, apply for uni. Yeah, so you've decided to become a paramedic, but now where do you go? What do you do? So like you said earlier, the university route is kind of the only way you can now become a paramedic. The entry requirements do differ per university, 
So we'd recommend you do your research on what university requires what. The HCPC website has a list of all the courses that have been approved by themselves. Um, only courses on their list will make you eligible to apply um, to register as a paramedic. And the College of Paramedics also has a shorter list on their website of the universities they endorse but definitely recommend doing your homework and attending open days, chatting to existing students. And you can also do that via the, some university websites. So again, do your research on that and make sure you choose what university feels right for you. So once you're at uni, what do you actually learn in the three years? So uh, on screen, you'll be able to see the indicative structure here at University of Gloucestershire. Um, but again, each uni varies. So check their website, speak to staff and students, go to open days, um, look at their prospectus and, and see which one's right for you. Um, but you, you'll cover all of the same stuff, just probably in a different order. So we, we study in year one, looking at the foundations of practice, looking at ethics and law and introduction to evidence based practice, as well as anatomy and physiology. Then we move into looking at what goes wrong with the body, so pathophysiology. Um, we've got more placement time. We start learning about medications, mental health. And then in year three for us, it's about leading and managing service and driving change within paramedic practice um, with more practice education, placement, um, learn more about minor illnesses. And that's where we do our trauma module. So what's your course made up of? How do you learn all this? Um, lectures, obviously. Um, you need to have the underpinning theory before you even start talking to a patient. Um, you need to know how the body works, what goes wrong, what to do when it goes wrong, and all of the legal, ethical, and psychosocial ramifications of what we do or don't do. You also need to learn the theory about the kit, and why you're using the kit, and how the kit works before you pick it up. So lectures are really important. They're also a great place to discuss things that you've seen out in practice and out on the road and be able to link it back to the theory and have discussions with your lecturers and other students. Um, so they are a really important part of the course. Yeah, they're, but they're not all just about looking at a PowerPoint for three hours on end. Um, sometimes our lectures include workshops, which involves equipment, group work, and there's also lots of interaction going on as well. So what you can see on the screen now is our paramedic skills lab. And this is where we work together and we put all of the theory side of it together in all of our other modules and we get to practice on our equipment, which is kind of exciting. Um, this is our screen ambulance. So we erect it where we want around the university. Sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's inside. And this simulates what it's like working in a closed environment because being a paramedic is not all about working in big open spaces. You have to be able to learn to get down into all the nooks and crannies of rooms. Yeah, and part of that is, is the kit. Um, I think it's really important to understand exactly what it's doing, how it feels um, in, your, in your hand, how to, how to break it, how to put it back together, uh, and what to do with it, and so that it feels right. It's almost like uh, muscle memory. So you need to spend the time um, using each bit and just drilling it over and over um, and your lab will have all of that equipment available for you to do so that things become really slick. Before we knew it, by the end of year one, we were managing the cardiac arrest, we were using um, advanced airways, we were recognising heart arrhythmias. Um, the first time that I did a full run through of a cardiac arrest, I was sweating, my heart was beating, um, I, I felt like I'd missed loads of stuff. Um, and I, I had my equipment in the wrong place, but other people thought that it looked like it went really well and that I hadn't missed anything. Yeah, I think now as well, it's kind of just second nature, isn't it? Um, it is very strange to think that even just looking back to June last year, there was no chance of me running a cardiac arrest. And now I feel like I could, I'm quite comfortable in it. And that's the preparation that we needed for when we moved out into placement. Yeah, exactly. Get, getting it right for getting it right in the skills lab first, getting it right in simulation really prepares you uh, for being out on the road. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's actually worked well with our next slide. So practice education, or some people call it placement, it differs per university. Um, and the structure also differs. So some universities do blocks of placement. Um, so they do six weeks of university, six weeks out on placement. 
Um, some also do mixed weeks. So you do say two days at university and two or three days out on placement. Um, again, have a look on each university's website and see which one is for them. Um, when you're out on placement, you work with a practice educator or a mentor um, and you follow their shift pattern. So this can be any time of the day. It can be nights, days, late. You can also be on a relief rotor. So you kind of go anywhere in the county um, to cover sickness and things like that. Um, but placement is so much fun. Um, it's definitely been the highlight of my course so far. Um, in year one, you're expected to be able to take observations, start developing your history taking skills and speaking to patients and their families. And it's also about getting used to the kit because when you're in the skills lab, you know exactly where the kit's going to be. And again, it's like muscle memory. However, when you're out on an ambulance in a high pressure situation, you definitely don't remember where all the kit is. So it's just getting used to being in a foreign environment and getting used to it all again. I think one of the most important things uh, for placement is the day one selfie. Um, it's kind of obligatory that you get sort of a picture in front of an ambulance and, and share it with all your friends and family. Um, apparently both me and Chelsea forgot, um, but we, we've stole a couple from a couple of our mates um, just to, to show you that it, it is a done thing um, uh, and people do do it. Um, but you need to make sure you've got your uniform, make sure you've got your uniform looking smart um, and have fun out on the road. Yeah, it is really fun. And you also get to work in some crazy places. Um, sometimes you're out in the countryside, sometimes you're in the middle of a town centre, city centre. It honestly just depends what day it is and kind of where you are. Um, you also get to work with other healthcare profession professionals. So you work with HEMS, which are the uh, air ambulance team. You can work with HEART. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You've, you've work with such a diverse range of people. Um, also, as you can see on the left, that's one of our third years now. Um, very rarely, but it is sometimes you do get a bit of downtime. Um, but like the one in the middle of the snow, I definitely recommend getting your uniform correct. And if you want to wear thermal socks for placement, then you wear thermal socks. It's a long 12 hour shift when you're really cold. Uh, all really warm so i'm i'm a, a bigger guy i'm built for comfort um i get really warm so for me it's making sure that you know i've i'm not layering myself up too thick so that i get sweaty as soon as you walk into someone's house it's like a furnace so definitely yeah like chelsea said dress appropriately for you um and make sure you've got the right amount of underlayers on and things because it can get cold um in the middle of the night and in the snow uh, to pre prepare you to be out in, in practice, there's some things you might not see so often as well. Most universities do simulation days, so you get to work with other services like the ambulance service and the fire service um, and simulate like a mass casualty event. So they, they're they really good fun. They're normally um, a, a decent half a day or a full day. And you get to you know get some time uh, on the ground looking at what you do, but also to step back and watch what other people do. So sim days are really good as well. Yeah, so after you, you've just seen all of that, you've now decided that paramedic science is a course for you. But how do you apply? Um, so you apply through the UCAS website and part of the UCAS form is filling out a personal statement. And this is a great opportunity to showcase your interests, your strengths, your talents, and also introduce you as an individual. Um, it is quite odd to the right one because you're selling yourself and... I, for one, felt it was very unnatural to be selling myself, but you, you've really got to. It is all about your personal statement. Yeah, and for paramedic practice, I think, you, you know, there's, there's quite some quite specific things that you're going to want to include. So you're going to want to research relevant websites. We've already mentioned the HCPC and the College of Paramedics. Um, definitely go and take a look at those. Um, ensure that you understand the role. Um, you know, speak to other students. Uh, if you've got access to people who work in the ambulance service, speak to them as well. Um, but it's not all about having to have done this type of work before or something like that. Think about the transferable skills that you've got, either from sixth form or college or from work that you've got in, you know, customer service, captain in a sports team. A lot of those things will all be transferable um, and, and bring over into paramedic practice. 
Um, podcasts are a good thing to listen to as well. I started listening to um, some podcasts uh, on paramedic practice before I uh, made my application. I haven't got a clue what half of it was about, but some of it inspired me. Some of it made me go and research some things. Um, and it gave me things that I could mention in an interview and in my personal statement. So um, definitely do homework. Yeah, definitely do your homework. And um, one thing we can recommend to pop into your personal statement are the six C's. So these are really important and you definitely need to know them as they're the values for all health and social care staff, not just paramedics. Um, there are six, but I'm not sure about you, Stu, but I only ever remember five and it's a different five every time. Yeah, I always forget one and it's always a different one. Yeah, I, I just can't get them right. Um, I managed to yeah. work all of these into my personal statement, not just by, by saying, oh, you know, care and then some writing about it. But I did manage to work them in. And it might sound cringy. Personal statements always do, um, because like Chelsea said, you're selling yourself. But I would definitely try and work some of these into either your personal statement or have examples of them for your interview questions. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Um, you also want to avoid empty statements. Um, any, if it doesn't add anything to your personal statement for paramedic practice, then 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 leave it out. You, you're limited on words and characters. So you know things like I've always wanted to be a paramedic. Um, have you? Uh, I I haven't. I, I'm 36. Um, I want. I decided to be a paramedic in about 2017. Um, so it didn't start when I was born. Talk about you. What made you want to become a paramedic? What made you apply for this course? Um, you know, when was that? And what made you get there? And here's another example of an empty statement. So yeah, for a paramedic, you do need teamwork skills, but as this statement says, it doesn't provide any evidence behind it. So you can put in your personal statement, you have teamwork skills, but how? You haven't, you haven't got any examples of when you've demonstrated this so anything you do put in I would definitely try and find evidence behind it it just supports it and it shows to the admissions team that you you can work in a team you're not just saying you can because that's one of the um kind of not course requirements but desired skill that you have before you start and that's it from us um, we hope you found it useful remember do your homework all unis differ in the way that they run the course. So find the one that's right for you. Uh, if you want to chat to me further, you can send me a message on Unibuddy um, via the little link on the screen. Um, and good luck in applying. Hopefully see you out on the road soon.